Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. I'm going to present an open source tool that flags malicious and other risky open source dependencies in your software supply chain. So hang tight. I'm Ashish. I hold a PhD in computer science from Georgia Tech. I work at Osmit as a cybersecurity researcher and we are developing tools to mitigate open source supply chain attacks. Today, open source software is the de facto standard way of building digital apps and services. Um, modern open source software is actually distributed uh, in, you know, as, as packages on package managers. Uh, examples of pop popular package managers include uh, NPM, PyPy, and VGEMS. For example, PyPy hosts uh, over 300,000 Python packages and receives millions of daily downloads. However, bad actors can carry out supply chain attacks by publishing a malicious package and propagating malware in these package managers. This is evident by several recent incidents. According to a recent study, uh, software supply chain attacks have actually tripled in 2021. And these attacks have been carried out on all ecosystems, NPM, PyPy, RubyGems, no ecosystem has been spared. So the question is, how do you defend against these attacks? Well, security is a shared responsibility and we must all do our part. For example, developers and uh, package managers can adopt two-factor authentication to protect against uh, account hijacking. Here at Open Source Summit, we talked about names coping. We talked about signing packages and commits and S forms. Unfortunately, these measures fall short. For example, this diagram is taken from Salsa popular software supply chain security framework from Google. And as you can see, an attacker can target your software development workflow at various steps. And um, while it can protect against other threats, it cannot protect you against compromised packages. For example, typo squatting. Typo squatting is an attack where an attacker would deliberately publish a package and name it after a popular package uh, in the hope that, you know, a careless uh, or an inexperienced developer would type the wrong name and uh, that's how they would install malware. Another example would be a disgruntled maintainer. And we recently saw this uh, in case of protestware uh, NPM package. Therefore, we must analyze package code and behavior before using it. However, this is easier said uh, than done. Manual vetting can be infeasible because a package can have uh, hundreds of uh, dependencies including direct and transitive. Which is why we have developed a tool called Package. It can semi-automate your package vetting. Uh, specifically, it looks for risky code and metadata attributes that make a package vulnerable to supply chain attacks. It carries out uh, static analysis, dynamic analysis, as well as metadata analysis to look for these risky attributes. We have derived um, uh, the set of risky attributes by studying 650 malicious packages uh, that have been uh, discovered in the past by the community. And we started as an academic research at Georgia Tech. The tool actually provides actionable insights into these attributes. For example, we check if the package is old or abandoned, right? Uh, an old or abandoned package can be taken over by an attacker. Is the author email valid for two-factor authentication? We check if uh, the package reads files or sends data over the network. We also check if the source repo of a package is publicly available and correct. We have actually built a com command line tool as well as um, CICD plugins for developers to use uh, package easily. And uh, finally, package can be customized to your threat model uh, to reduce uh, alert fatigue. Uh, if you don't want package to alert you on um, lack of uh, public source repo, then it won't. So you, you need to simply edit a file and comment that on a term. So let's see package in action. Specifically, let's um, audit a package uh, called uh, Browsify from NPM and uh, trace the installation as well. So there's a lot going on here. So let's uh, unpack uh, slowly. So first thing that it does is uh, it's going to fetch the Browsify package from NPM using NPMJS uh, API. And it found the latest version 
then it will check the package description and it found something so it's going to display that then it's going to check for the release history and it found uh, hundreds of versions which is good so you know that the package has been under development for a while and they've been stable releases then it's going to check the version um, and here you can see the version is actually 702 days old so this could be a problem for you if um, you cannot accept packages that are that old then it will alert you then it will check for release time gap which is um, when was this version released since the prior release uh, and you can see that it's uh, there have been a gap of 68 days which is good uh, this is to check if uh, if there was an old package and now it's been taken over by an attacker and there's a sudden uh, drastic um, development activity after a long time. Then it's going to check for the author and author email. In this case, the author email has email domain has been expired. So it could potentially be taken over by an attacker. So this is a risk. Um, finally, it will check um, other attributes, metadata attributes such as readme, homepage, um, and then it will jump to uh, provenance, which is uh, uh, looking for public uh, availability of source code repo. And in this case, it found one on GitHub and uh, with uh, over 14,000 stars and over 1,200 forks. And you can see this repo is original. It's not fork, um, um, so which is good. And then you can look at the report description and compare the package description. So browser side require the node way and the repo says the same thing. The browser side requires the node uh, JS way. So you can know that this is a uh, correct repo. Uh, finally, there have been a number of comments and contributions, which is good. Uh, no CVs were found. CV information is actually fetched by, um, by uh, querying OSV database maintained by Google. Then it will check for number of dependencies. In this case, um, you know, if it's more than 30, it will alert you. You can change the threshold, th adjust the threshold. Uh, finally, it's going to download the package. In this case, it's uh, just 163 uh, KB and uh, it will analyze the package using static analysis. And it found that three permissions are needed. It will decode uh, some code on the fly and it requires code generation. So it will generate new code and it will also access your file. So if this, these pose a risk to you, then package tool is going to alert you. Um, it also checked for number of files and functions. So that way you know that there are no native extensions, no executables, um, right? And finally, it will um, install the package and trace code. And it found five process, 1130 files and 22 network system calls. That means it's going to access file, uh, it's going to perform network uh, operations and also spawn processes so if these are uh, risks uh, to you you can uh, you can take a deeper look uh, the complete report has been generated here and overall the package may be undesirable for you so it's for you to take a look at these uh, uh, these risks uh, identified by the tool so it has narrowed down from manual vetting to, to a couple of uh, uh, code lenses hopefully Let's look at the CICD example. So we do have a GitHub action uh, plugin that will detect uh, weak links uh, in your uh, supply chain. This is an example. Uh, if you include the action, um, it's available on GitHub Marketplace. It will generate a security scan report for you. In this case, uh, it was created for workflow run 21 on this commit and 15 issues were found in dependency. And then you can click uh, for details. Like I said, you can customize package according to your threat model by editing package.yml. Um, in this um, example, you can see uh, if you don't care about old and or abandoned packages, you can simply uh, disable this, uh, right on it's enabled, and you can customize to your uh, threat model. We actually use the package to perform continuous vetting of uh, PyPy uh, packages. Over 330,000 packages have been uh, have been analyzed and we found over 70 malicious packages and uh, they've been reported. Some of the recent findings include uh, this, and uh, you can go to this website, package.dev, which is our uh, uh, website uh, in slash malware to look at uh, details. That's it. Uh, thank you for attending the talk. Uh, package source code is hosted on GitHub, and we are accepting uh, code contributions.
Like I said, there are millions of pre-vetted packages and security reports available for free at package.dev. And it's powered by Oscillate. Uh, you could send your questions, comment at oss.oscillate.com. Thanks.